Welcome everybody back to Full Throttle Vision with Tony and Jerski and Groot today. We got Groot up in here. You said he was going to be a pain today. You got yeah, the Groot ski. Yeah. What is a Groot exactly? What the is he a pit? Groot is only sixty pounds. He's a little guy. He is a uh, King Corso pit, King Corso pit bull mix. Oh, he actually is oh, really nice. little. Nice. How big he should be. Did you get him from yeah. a, a breeder, or did you get to save him from a, um, a shelter? No, well, somebody just had a bunch of pups, and he was the run of them all, and I got him for free. They just gave him to me. I got him when he was probably two months old. Oh, he was little. Was I remember when you got him. He was little. little. Okay, come on, Bob. Is he a chewer, or what, what is he? What, what's, a, what, what's he do? Well, he's got a shit little toys. He loves to chew on his bone rope. He loves the ball, dude. He's crazy. He's a crazy little dude. He's I wish I could do people. it. I have a dog. He's bitten five people, and he bit he bit two people. He never by bites anybody. He, was, he, he bites everyone. It's not like uh, <laughs> he never It's did. not like uh, 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 dead boyfriend. It's not like that. It's uh, it's uh, this dog does bite people. If you come by him, oh, does he bite? Yes, yes, he bites. And if you do yes, something after that, please tell the story of dead boyfriend. Please tell okay, the story so, so, of the dog. Uh, what's a real name so we don't have to keep saying that? Hold on a second. Keep fucking forgetting. <laughs> Fuck. So she has this DB. dog. She comes and we'll, we'll, we... we'll just call her DB. I'm not gonna keep saying dead boyfriends. That's mean. Go on, go go lay, go lay down. Come on. So, anyways, DB. We meet this woman. She brings this puppy. Well, first when we met her, she brought this Pro Street uh bike to um to um Daytona or the yeah, expo. She brought to the old expo, the one that were like the, yeah. the same place where I have it again right now. Yep. We'll talk about that here in a second. Yep. 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 And uh, so she brings this pro street bike. Everybody's like, oh, this woman, she's, she's got this bike, you know, and everything. It was a nice bike, nice red pro street bike and stuff. And uh, then she came later on and she brought this little wiener schnitzel, this little tiny little furry little. I want to say it was a crested, know. a Chinese crested. It is what crested, it was. Little Jack Russell thing. Yeah, I call them wiener schnitzels. They look like cats. It's all wiener schnitzel to me. So anyways, um. She brings this dog in and it's dressed all up. It's got a leather little vest on the hair. Everybody's like, oh, it's so cute and stuff and and everything. And uh, everybody's like, oh, does the dog bite? And she's like, no, the dog doesn't bite. And every time anybody went to go like pet this dog, it would like snip at him and try to bite him and stuff, you know? And, and we're like, hey, what's going on? She's like, oh, it's never done that before. So then she comes to date. I don't know what's going on with the video. You see it flickering? Yeah, it's, it is flickering. It's weird. That's okay. Okay. I don't know if it's on my end. I want to fix it if it is. Anyways, um, so Paulie gets to meet the dog for the first time. Remember in Daytona? I think it was at Wing House. <laughs> We're about yeah, Paulie's my brother. Was, yep, Paulie Cianci. He, uh, he was oh, it's a nice little dog. You know, he had a little Fitzy at the time, so he had a little dog. So he was checking it out and everything, and it snipped at him. He goes, this little fucker, you know, trying to bite me. So later on, somebody else comes up. They're like, oh, the dog's cute, doesn't bite. She's like, no, she goes, he goes, so listen, lady, this dog has literally fucking bit every person that's came in contact <laughs> since we met you for the last two days. Quit lying to these people. This little shit's trying to bite and bit every single person. You quit lying to these fuckers. Quit telling this dog don't bite. Hence why I tell everybody <laughs> who group bites so they stay the fuck away from him you know but yeah and her nickname um, became dog bites everybody and now now it's that she walks around with his dog in her arms and it's it went from dead boyfriend to dog bites everyone now yeah. she got dead boyfriend she came with the bike who was a, it was her boyfriend's bike and she was trying to sell it and she couldn't away. remember her name so that's how he remembered her so we're not being mean or rude we, we we tried to help her sell the bike actually numerous times we tried to help her sell that bike i think she sold it for pretty good money too but uh, yeah, he left it to her. Name. I actually know her name, but I can't say it online because, you know, you can't just bring people's yeah, names. Yeah, but I remember she was trying to sell the bike and make good money for it, and she was taking it around, and we had to help move it, and it was uh, it, it was, it was, uh, it was fun. We, we got to know her, but that, the dog bit everybody. It wasn't just one person. Anybody that came near, it was like, what, what are you, what, don't tell it doesn't bite. It bites everybody. Oh, that was funny. Anyway, that was Daytona, one of our many, many fun times in Daytona. Um, I might as well go there first. Let's go there first. Daytona Bike Week. Cage, are you okay with that? Can we jump to those? I don't know if we had them in order or whatnot, but uh, hopefully we can jump to the Bike Week shows that we got coming up because it is March first through the tenth this year. 
super excited. I, it is your your, your video, Jerski. It's something's going on with you. It's got a little uh, blip to it. Yeah, I have Weird. no idea what's doing. Don't so here you it, go ahead and talk about that. Go ahead and bring Tony up big or talk about that. I'll see what I can do here. Yeah, it's kind of weird. You got a little uh, little Jimmy jog going in there. God, my, my screen, I got too much crap behind me. Anyway, we're going to talk about all the Expo stuff coming up, uh, or not Expo, Bike Week stuff. Bike Week, we kick off on uh, March 2nd. March 2nd is over at the Teddy Morse Pavilion. That's going to be awesome. Awesome, great, fun show. It's the first week, which is cool because not everybody's there the first week. You know what I mean? The big builders don't come into Wednesday, the second week. So this is more for the locals. The people want to come the first week. You can see it's at Teddy Morris's Daytona Harley Davids under the pavilion. We did a 12 class bike show. I used to do 10. I added two classes to our shows. I added chopper and cholo um, because I think choppers are making a comeback. And I think cholos are becoming a very big style. Um, I probably should break down the bagger class a little bit more and not just say bagger because you got fat wheel baggers, you got 30s, you got, but we can move those into other things. Um, you can keep that up, Cage. I wanted to hit a few more items on there. We're going to do uh, Iron Goddesses, are, are a group of female women. Now, these are, you know, good looking female motorcycles, motorcyclists that are putting on a show in April down here and they're going to come help us set up. They're going to be with the full throttle under the tent. They're going to pick the, the ladies' class, and they're going to go out there, and uh, they're, they're going to help promote for their show they're doing and all that good stuff. Now, this is a cash prize bike show, $100 for best in show and $100 for judge's choice. So we got a four-foot trophy for judge's choice and 100 bucks, and a four-foot trophy and $100 for, judge, for uh, best in show, which is that's good money back. You know, we're doing registration, $30 for first class, $10 for additional classes. Uh, again, sponsored by uh, the Fran Hash Law Group. This is a good first kickoff show and really is the first show of Daytona. I mean, there's nothing else since that first Saturday. It's at the Pavilion. You want to do a show. We usually get 60, 70, 80 bikes in the show. Come on out. Let's try and knock these out. as uh, Get the biggest show. I'd like to see 100 bikes in the show. Again, we have a bike for everything. You got an FXR, we're going non-bagger. You got a trike, you got trikes. You got paint, we got paint. You're a lady rider, we got that. You'll ride a metric bike, we got that. You got a uh, antique we got that you got a chopper we got a class for everything so come on out put your bike in the show it's a good time uh we don't do anything sunday or monday in fact we're gonna go riding sunday and monday so our next show after that is gonna be tuesday over at the wing house we got two shows back to back at the wing house tuesday and wednesday why tuesday and wednesday because what the hell we got nothing else to do we didn't have any shows and wing house has tuesday uh Two for Tuesday from Crown and Down. $2 crowns and down, guys. Go find $2 crowns somewhere uh, on Main Street. Ain't going to happen. You know? And then Wednesday, you got boneless uh, medium or boneless, what is it? All you can eat boneless wings for $14.99. So they wanted to come out. And we're going to be out there hanging out. It's a little cheaper show, $20 instead of $30. And then we got first place in each class and one best in show each day. We're going to get the Wing House girls out there. They're going to help pick one of their favorites. We maybe let them pick the ladies class and then get some pictures on bikes and you know hey you gotta eat you might as well come have lunch and eat and win a trophy for your bike after that we start thursday thursday we got two shows we start at cabbage patch with the bagger showdown that one is thursday at the budweiser bagger showdown at the cabbage patch we got 10 bagger classes straight bagger classes so from fat wheel to 30 to the above 30 to stock you name it 30 for the first class 50 for two classes first and second place and then four foot trophies like we do for best in show and judges choice of course sponsored by attorney fran hosh that's at 549 tomoka roads farm farm roads farms road then that night we get done with that we're done at ford with the awards there then we hustle over to the grand view live now, Cage, are you coming out? Maybe, Cage, we're going to have some video in coming. Yeah, you can flip over to that. We're going to have some video in for our Thursdays and Friday shows. Uh, I believe uh, we're going to video a lot of this. So when we get back from Bike Week, you're going to see a lot of content coming back. This is at nighttime. You don't have to go into the club if you don't want to. Some people don't. But we have fun. It's in the parking lot. We do an audio show. Charlie runs an audio show. We do heavyweight, middleweight, lightweight. Uh, you can see that it's a little different shows because the normal bikes don't come out. So we do triple bagger class, metric, mild, paint. But if you enter the show, you get to get in the club for free. So we had to have a good time. And it goes fast, man. Let me tell you this. By the time we get started with this show, everybody comes flying in. 
people are in the club. Next thing you know, it's 1 a.m. We're trying to give away awards, and we're not even ready. So it's a good time man, at this one. And, of course, why not stay open, stay out until 2 a.m. when you got to be somewhere at 7 a.m. for the Boardwalk Bike Show? The next one, the orange ad with the Boardwalk Bike Show. This is our Coupe de Gras, our biggest show of Daytona Beach. Um, we have hit 180. I'm going to say 183, I think, is our highest number of bikes. Not entries, people. So say one bike entries, four different classes. I don't count entries in this show. We count bikes we have had 183 bikes in this show and i really 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 want to get to 200 on this show if you've never put your bike in a show before come bring it we have 17 classes we got so many classes we know where we can put you um you know in, in first second and third in each class winner wins 500 dollars cash if you get there early between 8 to 10 you save 10 bucks uh on registration um we try to do the awards about four. Honestly, it's about five, but we keep ourselves to four and give ourselves that extra hour because we're usually running up and down the, the street. Jerski, are you back? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, Jerski judges all of these shows. Uh, I bring him in from Daytona. We have, In fact, we are from Ohio. We booked his plane and hotel. So Jerski is our professional IMBBA trained judge. Let's bring Jerski back here. Let's talk to him about that. You, We say IMBBA <clears throat> trained. Because of uh, Steve Galvin, and um, I would. How many shows do you think you've judged with me now over the past four, five, six, seven, eight years we've been doing this? How many shows do you think you've judged? Um, Got to be in hundreds. I don't know. I mean, look at this. You're looking at six shows to be judged in one day. I mean, in, in one event, you know, that's six shows, and I'd say three a year. That's probably a minimum of twenty. If I, I don't know, man, a few, a few hundred shows, <laughs> a few hundred shows you've done. So yeah. nobody, and, and when people ask a question, I'm first to tell them, we will tell you why you didn't come in first or second or third. You know, we're, we may not know right away. You know what I mean? Cause we've judged again, Jeremy judges around 200 bikes that day. I'm going to try and knock some out with you, but it's hard to have another judge in there because my judging is going to be different than his judging. So if we judge the same bike or two different bikes in the same class, and it gets like a you know a hundred from me, and it gets like a ninety from him. Then we hit, we're off a little bit, and that's that's hard to do. Um, we're never that far off, though. I don't think Jeremy, you and I, unless you're in a bad mood. Well, it's always good uh, to have one person do it. Either just you do it, or just I do it. Like when I'm not there, and you got your shows, you know, like you have now at home, you just do those ones by yourself. It's better to have one so you don't get no conflicted uh, judgments, you know, no conflicted points, you know, but. Uh, yeah, we, we're not ever really too far off. A couple points here and there or something like that. But, yeah, we go back. And I think fix if you have we multiple go, judges. We go, we go back and go over together and fix it, you know, and look at yeah. a couple ties. And sometimes we'll take the top and the bottom of a, if it's just you and I, we'll look at it. If we're that far off, we'll go look and you'll be like, okay, I saw this. I saw that. And I'll be like, okay, I didn't see this. I didn't see that. So, you know, we, we put a lot of work in. We are very, like, I've gone to shows where I've seen, and I don't want to talk bad about other judging shows. I'm, I'm never that guy. I love bike shows, all bike shows. Mine, The Man on the Moon, Urban Rides, you know, uh, Bike Show Mafia. I, I love all these guys that are putting on bike shows because it is our industry, and I love it. I love a bike show. I can give a rat's ass about a car show. I honestly do have no love in my life for a car <laughs> show, but bikes I can look at all day long. But – I've been to shows where they've, I've never seen them judge the bike. I've never seen them look at the bike. You know, I, you know, we're out there on our hands and knees, you know, with our, with our clipboards and our hats and we're dying at the boardwalk because it's so hot and getting drinks because we want to be specific about these bikes that win. I, I, my reputation is full throttle magazine and Jeremy's is as my professional judge is on the line. And the last thing I want is for us to pull the wrong bike or somebody, you know, Again, we took the boardwalk over because a metric won a Harley class or Harley won a metric class in the back of the day. And so everybody come to me and go, what the hell had just happened? I said, I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. They're like, a Harley won a metric class. I said, yeah, that's not right. Harley's not metric. So what happened was I brought in us as judging and I said, this isn't going to happen again. The boardwalk's too good of a show to have bad judging. So that's when we turned it over. We took it over. From Bill Chafin, I don't know if you know that name. Bill Chafin is a resident over in Daytona. He was running it forever. 
I put my dues in, worked with him, and he said, you know, you have the wherewithal to take it over, and uh, he handed it over. So uh, Bill's a good guy. He used to help us put the posters up. Now we're there with Dino, and Dino's been part of the chamber. He runs that uh, boardwalk and all the shirts and everything like that down there. So Dino's great people, uh, sits on the board, all that good stuff. So um, we're looking for 200 bikes in that show. That's going to be fun. So that's it. Daytona's booked. We're ready to go there. First through the 10th, we're going to be out there doing that. Um, I think uh, let's talk about tonight. Tonight we got a bike night at Circle S Barbecue. Not Circles Barbecue, it's Circle S Barbecue. And we're giving away diamonds for Valentine's Day because it's Valentine's Day, Jeremy. Happy Valentine's Day, buddy. Happy Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day. Thanks, man. So it's our bike and Jeep night. Now, look at the live music, by the way. Jasmine Kane. Yeah, Jasmine Kane plays the big shows. Jasmine's doing her, I want to say her acoustic set tonight. So pretty awesome. But what we're going to do tonight is we're giving away, the see those diamonds right there? It's a diamond set of earrings. Let's see, what's it called? Ross Simmons, half carat count, total weight diamond, open space, heart pendant necklace. Okay, that's one of those pendant necklaces. A Natalia nice. Drake, quarter count, total weight diamond, heart earrings. 925 sterling silver. Look at those heart earrings. Those are pretty bad. And uh, sterling silver diamond heart pendant. That must be the one on the right at the bottom uh, with a half carat count. Those are not, that's not bad. Over $500 in value, of course, sponsored by Attorney Fran Hosh. We, we got some Jeep of the Night and Bike of the Night trophies. And I'll tell you, some of the best barbecue in town. I, I know they, they don't get the love that other places do because he's up in Hudson, but his barbecue, hands down, one of my favorites. You got a you got a favorite barbecue joint up there in Toledo, Jersey? Yeah, we got a place called uh because we have we have a big thing here called the Rib Off. I don't know if you remember the Rib Off where we have big bands oh, at the yeah. Lucas County yeah. Fairgrounds. We have the Rib Off and uh and uh yeah, yeah. I got Deets. Deets is a good place out of Maumee. Me. Now they're all over the place. Deets barbecue. And then we also have um uh what's the other place called, man? Famous Dave's. Famous, famous Dave's. Dave's. You'll remember Famous no, Dave's? Was, no. West Side. I was, I, I, what oh. I remember up there was, was a barbecue. We had the uh, the Ruben. No, what was the um, what was the place on uh, oh, roast beef sandwiches? Red, Red Wells. Red Wells. And then yeah, hot dogs, of course. Business, so that was what I had. Yeah, that's been yeah, going for Red good Wells. 25 years, if not longer, yeah. Yeah, that was a long time ago, and was and then that was that was good stuff. Cause I remember that and hot dogs. That was all Toledo was known for for me. But yeah, Rudy's Rudy's hot dog, man, old that school. Like too. that one by yeah, the one over there. Yeah. So Rudy's was like you walked into an old school cafeteria. That's how I could figure it out. You grabbed a tray, and it had like the tray. You know, you walked in. They what do you want? They, they were always like kind of mean. They, oh, yeah. Two dogs and some chicken, some uh, fries. All right, here, get over here. I'm like, oh, Jesus, what did I do wrong? It was like but, the lunch uh, lady yeah. in school or, or going through the prison line <laughs> getting your, 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 your stop, you know? Right? Wow. That's what, well, I don't know the prison line. I only know the school line. But it's what it felt like. You got your tray. You went through. You got your stuff. And you're at the end. You paid. You got out. And, you, and they always had animals on the wall. They had every, like, Deers and rhinos, buffalo hippos, and boars, deers, all kinds of shit all over the walls. What a strange joint, man. What a strange place Rudy's Hot Dog was. That was good times. But anyway, so tonight we're going to be doing that at Circle Less Barbecue, giving away some diamonds on Valentine's Day. I hope when people show up, I know that you know, most people are out going out and doing their dinners and their fancy schmancy stuff. But uh, come on out, be biker, bring your Jeep, bring a bike. We're going to be giving away lots of diamonds and ton of fun stuff. Yeah. And then... Uh, I think we're going to go right into it, Jerski. We'll keep this nice, short, and sweet today. We have announced the Florida Motorcycle Expo is coming back after, I want to say, a two, three-year hiatus from COVID. So we are coming back, and it's going to be at Quaker Steak and Lube. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we, we, but we were at Quaker for a long time. Honestly, that's not the original. We went in Quaker for quite some time. Um, this event actually started out at the convention center, and then – Moved to the uh, let's get um, to the fairgrounds and then went back to the convention center down in Clearwater. No, you can bring that back up. You don't have to pull that down. Let's look at it real quick. Yeah, so ten this years is ago when I came and did it with you ten years ago. This is where it was. Was at Quaker Steak and Lube. 
Yep. Tracy came up with that new logo. I like you like the skull logo with the flames and the hand grips Natural holding world. on a motorcycle. Nice. Yeah, that's nice. pretty cool. April 19th to the 21st. It's the weekend before Leesburg at Quaker Steak and Lube. Everybody keeps going, where's it at? There's one Quaker Steak and Lube in Florida, people. Figure it out. It's not that hard. It's in Clearwater. All right. Um, of course, Attorney Fran Hash could a sponsor. Live music, $100 an hour. Miss Full Throttle. We're going to do a bikini contest. Tons of vendors, and our bike show is going to be on Saturday. That picture right there, I believe Charlie said, is when we had Lita Ford on the stage. Look at that picture right there, Jerski. How many people are in that shot alone? That's pretty packed, man. You were on the news for that show. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this show was was uh, impressive. We we did a lot of stuff, man. We were really on the ball when moving with this. Right before COVID, we we uh, booked, um, and you, you can bring up the bands. We'll talk about those next. Uh, right before COVID, we booked Daughtry. Yes, Daughtry from American Idol. We booked uh, Uncle Cracker, and we booked um, okay, Buck Cherry. Those bands were fantastic. That was a big event. And we're bringing this back, so we got some local bands that we're going to do this year, and then we're going to step it up and do what we can. So you can see Friday night, we're going to have Jeff Atolo and the Quarter Mile Rebels. Uh, Rockabilly, he's a great dude. We've been a family friend for a long time, and then he's opening up for the ultimate tribute band, ACDC Highway to Hell. So uh, that's going to be awesome. Good night, Friday night. Saturday, uh, we just announced we're going to do the Full Throttle Band, I think, on the kickoff of the day. And then we got Symmetry, which is a kick-ass band, and then into Kiss America. Jerski, you like Kiss? Yeah, I've seen that Kiss America out there before. They're pretty good. Yeah, they do have a lot of fun. I mean, it's they they got the full dress garb, man. They they go out at it. And then they Sunday, pretty smoke. good Sunday. Yeah. Pretty good Sunday. Bobby Frisk is a lot of fun. <laughs> What's up? I said they got the pyrotechnics. They got all the stuff going on. Kiss, Kiss America. Oh, yeah. They they do it up. They I want to say that they're actually okayed by Kiss themselves as one of their uh, tribute bands. They got the certified by Kiss. So, uh, and then of course Sunday, a kick-ass day. Bobby Frisk and the Bearded Brothers. I mean, that's a good lineup for what we're trying to bring back. I mean, don't get me wrong, that's a lot of money, but we're looking for sponsors to get this going. We're gonna uh, have a ton of vendors and bring it back to old school. That's why our logo is kind of a little old school with the skull and you know. Uh, you can bring up our vendor booths now, and, and this is going to be the layout of the event. This is, you can see where the vendors are now. If you can't read it, don't worry about it. But you can see that this is where uh, we've done in the past. We've had actually opened it up where you can see porta potties are down at the bottom left by the stage. Um, you know, a bar in the middle, parking, bikes after that bar, uh, vendors there, you know, food outside, bar, bars outside. Now, you know, people think, oh, you're putting an event on. Great. The back end stuff, like this layout alone, when we did it back in the day, took a days to get done. I mean, somebody laid this all out, and then we had to figure out where the vendors can go and how deep it is. And, you know, it's not something that's just simple and easy and lays out and gets done. You know, I mean, the the porta potties, the stage, the sound, the ve the electricity, uh, you know, just a lot of work goes into putting on one of these events that people have no idea. Um, super excited for this. You know, the whole staff of Quaker Steak and Lube needs to know what's going on. They need to be able to uh, know what bars are working. They need to overstock. They, they've, I mean, once you start down the rabbit hole of what needs to get done for big events like this, it's a lot. You know what I mean? Like if Quaker doesn't overstock that day and they run out of stuff, what are they going to do? You know, so they got to think about overstock and everything. And what happens if they over overstock? Now they got to get rid of that product. So, Yeah. Needless to say, we're excited that it's coming back. I know, uh, you know, Bill Church and Quaker Steak and Lube and the managers and the people that work there, they still wear the shirts. I see them all the time wearing Expo shirts. And, you know, they do specific shirts for the event. And it's super stoked to come back to where we like to consider home base with this. You know, we did a couple of years over at OCC, Burt's Barracuda. They were great years when they were just before they were opened. Um you know, we did them on a dirt patch and we had a tornado come through and God, you name it. And we took a hiatus because of some of those issues. And now it's, it's, we just got to come back and bring it back to where it is. hundred percent free. It is 100% free to come to the event. Jerski, what do you think about that? Nice. Nice. Definitely so, nice. That's uh, I can't get mad at it. I mean, we're trying to make it a big party because free, you know, I want to charge to get in. Don't get me wrong. Cause that would help us. You pay the bills, but 
to make it free, we may, you know, we may put a box out there and ask for donations to help us, you know, can, uh, carry the event. If you put some in, you put some in, you don't, you don't. It's how that works. You know, we're going to do our best to put on a great event for you, the people, keep the beer prices cheap, keep the vendors great, um, keep the bands good. That's what it's all about. I mean, you guys have a lot. Summertime, you're, you're busy up there, Jersey. summertime. Let's face it. So probably, what, October through um, yeah, March, you guys are dead? October through March? Yes. Yeah, I'd probably say the end of March, early April. You know, we're starting to bring stuff back to life, bike nights and stuff about April. Yeah. Yep. So you see, uh, so, got, so the bars so start kicking up. Yeah, yeah, we got Ohio Bike Week, you know. Uh, that's a big thing we got here at Mad River, Harley-Davidson, and Sandusky. And um, Does anybody else do smaller on. events? Like, is, is does, like, um, let's give me a small town. Well, do they, does, like, well, we, Bowling well, Green we do a bike the, fest or? No, they have tractor poles. That's their big thing, tractor poles. Oh, okay, so you guys have a lot of different stuff up there. You guys got some more, oh, we got different some more stuff country stuff. Else. Yeah, we got tractor poles, four by four things, Bigfoot competitions, indoor, outdoor. Um, they do um, like ATV contests and stuff. Then we got motocross yeah. stuff, everything like that. But uh, yeah, when it comes to uh, just like bike stuff, all we have really is Ohio Bike Week. And then all summer long, everybody just always rides out. To, like you got Jimmy Buckets and stuff like that. It's a, like a biker place you go to, you ride your bike out uh, near Sandusky and uh and go out by the water. They got like little tiki set up everywhere, Jimmy Buckets and stuff, little like little areas and shit like that. So there's all kinds of riding stuff. We got Margaritaville. We got Margaritaville. That's what I was thinking. I was trying to remember the, the, mar- the places, places we like go and ride. There's a lot of places to go ride to and a lot of sh- to where we try to make it look like, hey, we got sand, we got beach, we got water. It's our like little baby Florida. But yeah, it's just fresh water and <laughs> fish stink and uh yeah. Well, what people don't There's realize, also- Sandusky's a big, Sandusky's a great town. Uh, you know, you got all that stuff. What else is in Sandusky? Uh, like I said, you got Mad River, Harley Davidson, and Sandusky. You got Cedar no, Point. The big thing in Sandusky. Is my there it is. There Cedar it is. Point Cedar Point, baby. Yeah. Cedar Point. If you've never been there, that's the America's roller coaster. It's the biggest roller coaster park in the world. Better than I want to say any Six Flag I know or anything. But Florida's giving them a run for their money. They're starting to build a lot more uh, uh, things. I heard. We may have the largest, fastest roller coaster coming up rather than the Magnum. As soon as they build something, they come up with something else, and they build something, and then, like, three people fall off of it, die, and then they wait a couple of years, and they build a bigger one. And Oh, yeah, you know how it is. Not, a fan. Cool. Not a fan of roller coasters at all. I don't ride that shit. If I ain't got the brakes, other than being on a plane, I don't roll out with nobody like that. Nope. You weren't you weren't fond of flying when I first put you on some flights, I believe. Uh, you you came off oh. that one, and I think you kissed the ground. I think when I come down here in uh, what like two weeks, when I come down to two and a half weeks, what like the 29th when I come down for bike yeah. week, I think this is going to be mid seventies somewhere. I'm thinking seventy three or seventy fifth flight, and every time I get up in that steel piece of shit up in the sky, mostly it doesn't matter who you're flying with, you're going to get tuned up you're gonna get smashed in a fucking can you're gonna get killed whoever i'm not gonna say no names of any commercial flight people anybody like that but uh yeah i'm scared shitless every time i get up there flying every time i'm scared shitless but the first time i started thinking crazy. about i started thinking about the space between you and the ground when i'm up in that plane <clears throat> and it's just cruising you're like holy sh- crap we are miles up in the sky that's a long way to come down Anyways, I don't want to think about that. I don't like. Well, the higher uh, I get, the faster we get moving. I feel safer because if you're gonna get cracked up up there, you probably really ain't gonna feel shit. You know, you're gonna be all toasted like an almond. You know, just splat and shit. You know, so I don't it's really like out. an it's, almond. It's like when you start coming down here and you're like, oh yeah, here you go, and you can see like the tops of buildings. You know, you get ready, and you're like, you know what? If we did it now. I would die and it would hurt because I might not die right away. A couple of broken bones, all twisted up and shit, you know? Like, that's the scary Do you get tuned up on the planes? Do you get? Do you have a couple of drinks on the plane or no? I used to, but no, I don't. I try to keep a clear head, man. Watch a movie or something. I'm only there from here to there, enough for a movie. It's only an hour 50, 90 minutes. Do you drink wine in the morning? Do you, do you drink wine yeah. out of jugs in the morning or no? Nah, get out of here, man. Wino. <laughs> You don't remember old All Floyd right. Bell? You remember old Floyd Bell back in the day? 
Uh, yeah. He used to oh, live yeah, down yeah, in the yeah. apartments and he'd always be pulling his whopper out in front of the high school girls and shit. He's dead now, so in case anybody wants to incriminate him and throw him in prison for pulling his dick out in front of uh, teenage girls <laughs> from high school. And he was a grown ass man. Yeah, we don't man. approve that. That's not good. We, no, we that's don't, not we something don't, we would approve of. Yeah, we don't condone yeah. all that kind of shit. But he was I believe we went to jail for that. He used to let us party at We his didn't house know that. That was, that was a long yeah. time ago. That was something. Your kids. Yeah, I believe we went to jail for that. Look at yeah. You. Oh yeah. Well, so uh, one last thing we're going to talk about is um, uh, Thunder by the Bay's coming up this weekend. Unfortunately, they're also calling for some crap weather, uh, which stinks. And it's it's Friday night. We can get Friday night in, so Friday night looks but looks good. But it's uh, Saturday morning and and pretty much all weekend. So we're hoping it blows away and doesn't do anything because they got great headliners: Molly Hatchet. Uh, Grand Funk Railroad and Creed Fisher. I mean, those are some great things. And it's uh, all charity. And, you know, there's a lot of events that say it goes to charity. And you never really know what happens. This one, we talked to Lucy. Remember, Lucy was a great person. We did a whole show with her. I want to say it was episode four, something like that. And then uh, she's great people. I mean, they raise a lot of money for this event. And they need it. They they, they help so many kids in so many different charities. Um they do bike shows, and then there's Friday night. There's a let's get crazy party or let's let's get wild party. And uh, but that's coming up this weekend. Thunder by the Bay down at the Sarasota Fairgrounds. Um, it's it's a great event. A lot of vendors, a lot of fun. Charlie's gonna be down there. He's camping. I'm gonna be down there all weekend long. Uh, super excited for it. I just hope the weather holds out and uh, we can get a good show in because uh, Thunder by the Bay is a lot of fun. A lot, a lot of a lot of people down at that one. So if you guys haven't been and you see this, go to Thunder by the Bay this weekend. You can't miss it. It's great stuff. All right. I like your Baker Act shirt, by the way. Baker Act Customs. I, I dig the, the shirt. I was down there a couple weeks ago doing their bike show down in Fort Lauderdale. So that was pretty neat to go see them down there. And nice, nice little trip out of town. So they uh, they had their anniversary party, and I helped them do their bike show. So. Yeah, All I right, that's it. We're gonna getting all in pictures, and you had the they had the matching Corvette to match that bike. Do you see it? No, but did you? Did you okay, so I ran into the guy from Cycle Drag, and uh, he was videoing that 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 chopper, whatever you want to call it. Remember that that gaudy chopper with all the oh man, you showed me some spikes pictures, and man. everything on it. It didn't so miss he said something he was getting overkill. so much hate. On that chopper, it was so bad. I, I wish I could. I probably could try and get a picture over and we could pull it up. But this chopper was over the top. It was like a Gucci chopper. And it had points and just way over the top. And Cycle Drag was there. Now, Cycle Drag is a website. I guess he's a he was filming everything. And, you know, basically he's been in love with Paul Sr. And now all these guys were giving him crap. They're like... I hope your boyfriend knows you're cheating on him with this other chopper. And he said I, it was just really funny of all the crap he was You don't like that guy, Psycho Drag, do you? You don't like Psycho Drag, do you? He's okay. I don't mind him. I mean, he's just, uh, he's. I, I've been watching I don't him before know. I knew he was starting to come down there. I've been following him I know. at the drag strip, watching him do stuff for like. But he's got away from drag strip stuff. He's not really doing drag stuff anymore, is he? Yeah, you watch him. I know there'll be a couple of drag stuff, but what he does, and I tried to message him, like, listen, quit making us watch them prep the bike, do a staging burnout, and get ready to launch that son bitch, and then it flips to another bike. We didn't get to see the race. We didn't get to see, see shit. Who won? Who I don't think they like, watch us see the races. Watch these two boosters. Watch these two boosters. Heads up. So we watch them. They, they, they fire the bikes up. They get the staging lanes. They get up there. They do a burnout. They get ready to launch it, and it flips to another bike. Half of that race, the beginning of it, it's like, you get your shit together. I just lost five minutes of my life. I'm never going to get back now. I never got to watch these bikes <laughs> race. But I got to watch the top end of a couple other different bikes. I didn't get to watch launch from the 60-foot mark. Just a mess. Amazing. Hey, Cycle Drake, get your videos together. I like watching them. But get your shit together, please. <laughs> now, you're talking about racing. You had a six-second car, a truck, didn't you? Uh, my father-in-law. Well, that was like an eighth. He had a he, he had a uh, an S10 naturally aspirated that ran uh, ten O's, nineteens on all motor. It ran like uh, uh, let me see, no, it ran nine nineties, ten teens or something like that. I'm I'm not real sure. 
I'd have to look back at it. But yeah, we made it on. Uh, he made it on uh, Pink's All Out. It was on the last yeah, show yeah, was that filmed at uh, Norwalk Summit Motorsports Park. Uh, I'd like to say maybe 2010, last show that they did of Pink's All Out, and um, he made it the bottom 16 out of 500 cars throughout the whole weekend. Got to be on two times, and 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 he yeah. lost, but man, he ran that son of a bitch out. He ran it good. Toledo, Ohio. I remember. I almost bought it. Someone from cares. You. Someone cares. Someone cares. Someone will care about that one. I, I, those, those pinks all out was uh, that was a hell of a show for a minute. You know what I mean? They were yeah. they, what it was was they were drag racing for pink slips for each vehicle, right? You you lost, you gave them your vehicle. Yeah, but then the last two seasons that they did it, they had some issues with it where they were just giving away uh, um, money. They weren't doing pink slips no but it was still called pinks with Rich Christensen, I think. Or Rich Rich Christensen, I think his name was. Yeah. Yep, we're on the very last one. It was kind of cool to be on TV. I was on TV with him, like in his pits and stuff. Yep. Rob Wright. Well, that's not the first time you're, Rob Wright. That's not the now, first time you're on TV, SPS right? 10. What's that? That's not the first time you were on TV. What's that? You talk about mugshots, jail stuff? You talk about Maury. You talk about Maury? <laughs> tell a story about People that. don't know that you're a celebrity. They have no yeah, idea we'll, you're a celebrity. Yeah, we'll keep up about the Maury and jail stories and all kinds of crazy shit. We got to keep that. If we tell it all at one time, we won't have nothing to talk about, man. No, that's what I'm saying. I'm not going to let it go. I'm just saying this man, this man's been on Maury. He's been on Pink's All Out. He's been a, where's your dash, by the way? Where's your dash? Huh? Where's your dash? I always give him a hard time because look, you see, Harley Davidson has always got a dash in between. He said he's got no dash in between his Harley Davidson. I told him I'm going to buy him a dash one day. Well, what you put I it on do, your do finger. I, do, I, do I just put it on? Do I just put it on one side here, or do I put one on one side here? See, so it'll be double hyphens. You don't put it on the pinky, you goofy bastard. Get out of here. <laughs> Got two whole separate arms. Harley Davidson, man. Don't be a dick. No dash, though, man. No dash. All right, that's it for uh, full throttle vision with Tony and Jerski. Uh, he's from Toledo. We we call him every day, every. Uh, week we talk about things going on in the motorcycle community down here in tampa bay he's actually gonna go see a couple people that we know up in uh, toledo or maybe go see uh who those people that the guy who came in one in sturgis what was his name oh we're gonna try to get if we can't get him on here next week we can maybe Trickle. get some info on the next couple of weeks uh carl bordner fa customs out of hefe uh, yeah yeah people don't Point realize hefe uh, customs it's kind of Toledo, Ohio, but it's Point Place, a little, a little more upscale than where I live at by the water. But people don't marina. realize that Hefe Customs came up with the the circles, the 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 for, the, the fitting the that the almost Hefe every ring. speaker uses yep. to to mount to their bags. Now Hefe rings are he he did that copyrighted it, and let me tell you, the man has sold a crap ton. It's it's one of the best forms of holding your your speaker onto wherever you're trying to mount it to. Yep, we're gonna go ahead and talk more about him either next podcast or the one after. But if you guys ever get on there, look up Hefe Customs or just hit him up straight. If you forget the that name, remember his name Carl Bordner on Facebook. He's a bike builder. People ship parts, pieces, bikes, get shit mailed to him all over the United States. Check him out. Hefe Customs. J E F E. J E F E. Yep. Hefe so, Hefe Customs. Customs. And then Mike Schrickle came up to Buffalo Chip and he was in a show and he ended up winning the overall. It wasn't last year, the year before. Everybody voted for his bike. So he won the Buffalo Chip Best of Show from every show that happened at uh, Buffalo Chip one year. Yeah, we got some badass dudes come out of Toledo. That is Mike Schrickle from Chop Machine. You guys want to ever buy a bike? He's got a nice floor out there where he's got some nice uh, um, used bikes out there. Been gone through. He goes through it and checks everything on them. Good. I know a few guys have bought some bikes from him. I buy a lot of parts from him. He's a good guy. Mike Schrickle, Chop Machine. Check him out too. A couple badass bike builders and good people come out of Toledo, Ohio. You got my uncle Rick Jersky over there at uh, at Biggs Valley over at East Toledo. Wrenching on bikes for shit, man. 30, 40 years just from this shop before it his whole life. So check him out. What's Rick his Jersky bike that he comes out with? What's that? What bike does he have? He comes that with the wheelie bars. Oh, the shovel. 
He's got a shovel that cool. is just fantastic. I mean, power yeah, out to the max. Hard tail shovel with a slick on the back. Really bar. It's got spray air shifter. Big magneto stabbed in the side of it. You know, it's pretty. It's pretty nasty. Pretty nasty. So he's put that in a couple of shows, and he's uh, he, we see him every year. He comes to Daytona. They they get a hotel, and we go see them and hang out with them. Good stuff. So again, Daytona's coming up. You got Thunder by the Bay this weekend, and then uh, I mean, just uh, a recap for what we have going on with Bike Week in March. Then April first, we start this week. This eight, my just so you know for where Full Throttle is going to be. The first weekend in April, we have Arcadia Bike Fest down in Arcadia, middle of the state. Great bike show. Love doing that one. The next weekend, we're in Tallahassee. So we go from the middle of the state south to the top of the state with the capital. So Rally and Tally is going to be a great event. Rappers, everything. Very cool. I love I love this new event, Rally and Tally. It's totally different than every other uh, event, you know, bike fest going on right now because it's – it's younger, young, got a very younger demographic and feeling, which is cool. Then we're doing the expo the weekend after that, 19, 20, 21. Then we are in Leesburg the weekend after that, Leesburg Bike Fest. That's going to be 26, 27, 28. Then I'm in Thunder Beach the weekend after that for my birthday. May 4th, we're doing our a big show at Thunder Beach in Panama City Beach. So travel, travel, travel. And then the 11th, May 11th, I'm actually going to Vegas, and we are doing a bike show with uh, – Big uh, Corey, Big Corey, who does all the West Coast sto- shows, uh, he's doing an audio show, and we are doing a ride and bike show at Las Vegas Harley Davidson. So Full Throttle will be out and about everywhere, all over the state of Florida. Uh, and then after that, Jersey, where we go? We're going to Milwaukee together. We're gonna fly. We're gonna drive up to Toledo. We're gonna ride to Milwaukee. We're gonna v- video that whole trip, and then we're gonna go to Buffalo Chip. So. I'm telling you, this year, super jam-packed with stuff. Milwaukee? Yes, we are. Yes, we are. You got to say, he keeps, until it happens, until I'm on the road, you're going to give me shit, aren't you? Until I Bob leave my well. office. Right? Bob Stillwell, oh, my okay. buddy Rich Gear. they're going to, uh, Bob's going to come out of uh, Indianapolis and meet us coming up. The old lady's going to have the, the truck and trailer, you know, just in case, or we actually need it because we're going to leave from where? Where are we leaving from? Toledo. To go to Sturgis. Toledo. No, where are we leaving from to go oh. to Sturgis? We're going to leave from Milwaukee to head right to Sturgis then, too. So we're going to ride. I'm going to bring the truck and trailer up to Toledo. We're going to ride to Milwaukee with her following in the truck and trailer. Then we'll be the ride or we'll load them up together. And we'll, we got a 12-hour trip over to Buffalo Chip for the first Friday where we do our kickoff bike show at uh, the Buffalo Chip. So, again, <coughs> what's nice is we have a week. We, ha- we have like four days to get 12 hours. So we can actually go travel something and go see something up in the Midwest instead of having to rush like we normally do. Well, we could get there early and we could do some good riding just <clears> because <throat> we're not going to be there long either. Oh, that's true. We could hustle ass. Remember the ride? Oh, the that's ride in like Sturgis. Who, I would. Yeah, I think I'd you're like you're right with that. Because we're going to have some days. Yeah. Let's go ahead and like hightail it up. She'll drive straight through if we're getting sleepy. Yeah, 12 hours ain't through. nothing. Yeah, 12. Boom. Set up. Go ride the next day or two, and then we'll have you know another day to go around the Buffalo Chip and look at some stuff, and then we'll set up for what? What's uh, the, uh is it a Friday or Saturday? The show Friday. We, we do, do the first the Friday. First Friday. So, so it's yeah, it's like that. Let's uh, do some Sturgis riding. Let's do some Sturgis oh, yeah. riding. Definitely gonna hook up some videos. Gonna have some some uh, um, GoPros hooked up to everything. You will be seeing all of this. Uh, on our Facebook pages, you know that I don't like doing anything without, you know, tracking it and doing videos and stuff like that. So everything we're doing, you can just make sure you check out our Facebook page, our website, our YouTube page. And if you're listening to this, by the way, I forgot to say this last time, if you're listening on YouTube or you listen on the podcast, just audio, um, Make sure you go to YouTube, look up Full Throttle Vision, or look up our Facebook page, Florida Full Throttle. Uh, of course, we are sponsored by attorney Fran Hosh, 866-LAW-FRAN, lawfran.com. She sponsors everything we do, motorcycle and car accidents. We got Jerski and Group today on the, sh- on the show right there. He started it off. He's going to finish it off. And uh, thank you, guys. Thank you, everybody, and our big sponsors. And we hope to see you guys out there. Jerski, say Peace. bye to everybody. See you guys. Take care. Bye, everybody. Should I say bye, everybody? Hello, everybody. I'm just kidding. Bye, everybody. See you from Full Throttle Vision.